ISIS. ISIS is almost a, a little bit of a microcosm, a way to look at this problem in, in, in one little piece. The key issue is that in Syria, as you mentioned at the top of the interview, the United States strongly supports ISIS. We arm them, we give them money, we train them. Uh, we have our own sneaky peats on the ground there helping them out. There are guys in Syria against the Assad regime. Over, of course, the in Iraq, they're now our enemies, and we're preparing to at least unleash special forces on them, if not, if not airstrikes. Whereas the United States sees some kind of line or a border or imagines kind of a, a Berlin Wall with checkpoints between Syria and Iraq, there is none. It's open desert. Anyone who wanted to wander back and forth across that area is welcome to do so. And seeing these problems as national state problems, here's Syria, here's Iraq, here's Iran, is one of the huge failures of American foreign policy. They cross Cross borders that, that don't really exist. As far as what's going to happen next, I think it's going to be only a question of whether the dissolution of Iraq occurs hyperviolently, a little bit violently, or only somewhat violently. It's impossible at this point to imagine any kind of realistic political reconciliation. Maliki has had uh, almost seven, eight years to, to pull that off. It's very doubtful at this time with troops in the field that that's going to happen. The winner in all this is very easy to see, and that is Iran. Iran, thanks to the United States, had its most significant enemies, the Iraqis on the west, the uh, Taliban on the east, eliminated, courtesy of the United States. And Iran has moved into Iraq in a huge way. They brokered the 2010 election that put Maliki in power when the United States had to step back, uh, powerless to do that. They have their own special forces, the Quds Force, uh, on the ground in Iraq. Um, and they own Maliki. Maliki spent the Saddam years in Iran in, in exile and uh, understands where his debts lie, whatever he happens to be mouthing bad about the Iranians these days uh, for the United States to uh, to click their tongue at. So you say that's him. He really works for them totally. That's all just window dressing. I believe so. Yes, I believe so. He's trying to get the United States to do some of his dirty work. You know, that's a curious, curious issue because I'm not saying Iran is run by Western uh, groups, but certainly the Shah was double crossed at certain levels in 79. They allowed the Ayatollah Khomeini to fly in out of Paris. We know they did the uh, Iran-Contra deal with them. And then the day Jimmy Carter was, you know, defeated, uh, then um, they released the hostages. Again, I mean, I'm a political Democrat Republican because uh, you, you, know, you have one group of Republicans leave and other group of Democrats come in. It's basically the same same, you know, same ideas, same systems, just different, different labels. But what is Iran's role uh, in all this saber rattling back and forth? I mean, I know Dick Cheney would talk bad about Iran all day and then separately had deals where Halliburton, when he was vice president, he was making money off this, his blind trust, was the only company that could sell oil field equipment to him. Uh, or he'd try to get, according to Cy Hirsch, Navy SEALs to attack a U.S. ship to blame Iran. But then he'd also be doing deals to protect him. I mean, when you get down to brass tacks, there doesn't seem to be any policy at all. Only a bunch of special interest making money off of the chaos. I keep coming back to that. Absolutely. I mean, Dick, Dick Cheney is someone who we really should stop listening to at this point. I, I think he's uh, pretty much displayed his lack of credibility, his lack of prescience, and his utter lack of, of intelligence on any of these issues. The fact that he was more interested in making money for himself and his old cronies than saving American lives kind of tells, tells the name of that tale. Iran is the winner in all this. And what will happen with Iran is Iran will continue to bolster its position as a regional power. Iran is going to secure its western border. It may push its western border de facto further towards Baghdad. I mean, they're never going to fly flags or anything uh, like that, but they're going to control territory that they didn't control before. Yeah, let's not forget there was an eight-year war between Saddam Hussein and Iran in the 80s, so they're getting politically and with uh, covert military police force what they couldn't get in an overt war that killed millions.
Absolutely. Courtesy of the United States and the 4,500 young men and women we, we sacrificed there. At the same time, Shias all over the Middle East are now seeing Iran as a major player uh, for their safety, their security, and, and as a political force. That's something, again, that Iran would have had a very, very hard time doing. The, the Iranians. Why have would Israel then hmm. tacitly support funding Sunni groups trying to take over Syria? knowing that they would then pour in and take over Iraq later. This is what happens when, like the United States, you pursue a policy of, of a long series of, of short-term goals. So you're saying it's one-dimensional. They don't think a few sp plays down. They only think, I don't like Assad, take him out. They don't think we're going to put a giant Saudi Arabian system in control of this country that's clearly going to end up trying to come in and take over. Absolutely. A absolutely. This is this is it. If if uh, the chessboard analogy I offered has any validity, it's if it's three-dimensional chess, if not four-dimensional chess, or something even more complex. Once you kind of take a deep breath and start in on this, it's it's hard to get it all out in, in one exhale. You've got three different groups in, in Iraq that are supported by a half a dozen countries outside of Iraq. Each of those entities has splinter groups and separatists with inside of uh, them. Stay there. Stay there. Let's 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 find out where all this is going. Going straight ahead with our guest. Amazing. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago, and I must say that was good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic Organic Super Male Vitality Formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products in InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. A 30-day GMO-free emergency food supply for only $99 at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can purchase Oregon Trail Foods' one-month supply of high-quality, nutritious, and healthy emergency meals. For less than $100, these vegetarian meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and they're packed with oxygen absorbers in Mylar pouches. They're completely free of any artificial flavors and colorings, have a 20-year shelf life, and take up to 70% less space than number 10 cans. They even offer a gluten free option. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then passing the savings to you. Purchase a 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 this month and $10 ships your entire order. Visit the website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where they make preparedness affordable. 30dayfoodsupply.com. operations in Iraq, a whistleblower and author. In closing, in the five, six minutes we've got left, 
does the establishment think they've got a plan and that they're in control? Uh, because, uh, you know, clearly um, the, the Middle East is deteriorating. I know Google knew that the Arab Spring was coming and basically tried to ride what they already knew was coming because food prices went up like they're now going up here. So, again, I'm not saying the, the establishment orchestrated the Arab Spring, but they now admittedly predicted it and tried to steer it. But it just doesn't ever seem to work. Or the State Department supporting right-wing Nazis in Ukraine who literally hile Hitler to try to start a new war with Russia. Again, in my view, it's not that Russia is some angel. It's just that America is so bad now. Is it ineptness or, or what, what's happening in the minds of the people running things? Do, I mean, do they think they're doing a good job? My own experience is whenever you're not sure, go with inept. Uh, it's the Occam's razor thing. The simplest answer is often the correct one. And my experience has been ineptness has, has ruled the day. Let's, uh, let's throw some predictions out there about Iraq. Um, because as the president has told us, we need to look forward, not backward. And a lot of the, the commentary I'm reading, Dick Cheney and others, is looking backward. Let's find someone to blame, whether it's Obama, if you're from that part of the spectrum, or it's Bush from from another. Though those things happen for sure, and history will sort those out. But let's look forward. I think the situation in Iraq is very similar to the end of apartheid in South Africa. Everybody knows it's going to fall apart. Everyone knows it's an unsustainable system. The question is, how will it fall apart, and particularly how violently will it fall apart? I think in Iraq, there's no question that you're going to have three separate entities. I, I hate to use the word state because it implies a, a government who, who makes postage stamps and picks up the trash and things like that. So it'll be like warlord run sectors. Sectors. Let's say sectors. That's a good, that's an excellent word uh, for this. You're going to have a, a, the, the Kurds, by the way, who, who rarely come up in these discussions, have been keeping on, keeping on for a very long time. They carved out their own de facto state early on in, in this game in 2003 and sit quietly back watching the rest of it happen behind their own walls with their own military. So other than a little score settling and some adjusting of, of borders, we'll leave the Kurds aside for a second. The Shias, I think, will, will hold Baghdad and they'll hold the areas south of Baghdad. Those are traditional areas. I doubt that a Sunni uh, military, army, mob, tribal organization or whatever really has, has the, uh, the muscle. So to, they'll get the West. Something. The Sunnis will continue to hold the West, and Bar and Western Iraq have been under de facto Sunni control for some time. What we're going to be fussing over is in the middle, and I suspect that the worst outcome will be continued violence, and that certainly will be the what sending more U.S. fight into the thing will do is just stir sure. it up. What does Saudi Arabia think it's getting uh, by doing this? At least Iran doesn't get the whole country now? It's, it puts themselves in a position to push back against Iran whenever they want to do that. It puts themselves into a much weakened uh, Iraq as, as a national state. Don't forget, Iraq uh, basically invaded Kuwait and a good chunk of northern uh, Saudi Arabia, though we don't like to talk about that too much. The Saudis have a state now that will not threaten them as a state acting Sure, entity. sure. I'm not defending Maliki in closing, but... Uh, you know, he basically is saying what you just said. He said all these interests want to break the country up. I don't want that. I guess from his own self-serving interest of prime minister wanting to be in control, or is that more yeah, talk? Absolutely. He doesn't want to run off to South America with as much gold bullion as he carries and spend the rest of his life, lo life looking over his shoulder. But that indeed is going to be what So you're saying to Iraq him. used to be in three parts. It needs to be in three parts? Needs to or will be are two different words, but it certainly will end up that way. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Peter Van Buren, WeMintWell.com. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks. Third hour. Your phone calls. Ton of news. The Genesis Community. Top story on drugs coming up. Network. Stay with us. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply 
utilized worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139.